As far as Torah proof, some of the things that people have a problem with, with the written Torah, is the fact that it was written 3,300 years ago, a little over 3,300 years ago. So how could a book that was written over 3,000 years ago be relevant to my life today? How is it possible? How could it be anything more than just a Harry Potter book? How could it be anything that's anything related to this modern world with iPhones and iPads and airplanes and Googles? How could it be? The amazing part of the Torah, as I said earlier, you could find something relevant to your life in every single parasha. The second thing about the Torah that's very different than any other book you will ever find is that it actually has information that no human in the world could have ever written. So I'll give you some examples to show you an understanding of how this cannot be a man-made creation. A lot of people have a problem with keeping kosher. They figure that if I go to the pizzeria, that's not kosher, but it's cheese. It's cheese. Not so bad. It's not meat. It's not meat. It's cheese. I'm not violating any rules. Which anyone who doesn't know, they are violating all of the rules, not just from the cheese, but the actual, che- the actual sauce has meat in it. Every pizzeria. That's how you make a different sauce. If you have three pizzerias that are not kosher, they're all using the same ingredients. There's cheese, there's bread, there's sauce. How is the flavor different? Because the flavor is different based on the meat that the sauce is cooked in. And also the meat that's, compri- that's part of the cheese itself. That's why it's not only a violation of kosher, but it's also milk and meat. But people have a problem with this. Well, maybe these kosher rules, maybe they're not really, uh, maybe it's some rabbi made it up. So Hashem says in our Torah, He says, listen, you're only allowed to eat a specific type of animal. It has to have two signs, split hooves, and it has to chew its cud. Fine. There's about ten animals that could do that in all of creation. It's pretty interesting. He listed those animals. But the more interesting part is that he said... That out of all of creation, which at this point we know there's approximately 2 million species. There's 2 million species that we know that exist today. There's probably, there's probably more, but there's 2 million that we know of, we have documented information about. And he said out of all of those 2 million species, only 4 will have one of the two signs. The kosher ones will have two signs. There's about 10 of them. The non-kosher ones will have nothing. No signs, but there's four that will have one sign. The rabbit, the herrings, which is similar to a rabbit, the pig, and the camel. Now, if this was a man-made book that, let's say, Moses wrote, or Abraham wrote, or Noah wrote, or just some rabbi a few thousand years ago wrote, do you think that he's going to take a risk in writing something that's completely untrue? Because he, he wants people to follow his religion. If he's doing it for power or for money, then he's going to try to make it as easy as possible to believe. So he's not going to say, listen, I have a religion here and I have some proof that this book is divine. If he tells you, listen, September 11th happened in the middle of Japan. The towers dropped in the middle of Japan. You're going to say, oh, there's a mistake in this book. It goes in the garbage. Right? Because September 11th happened in New York City. So if he's telling you there's only four animals out of two million species 3,000 years ago, well before humans knew about these two million species, there's something to it. And the interesting part is until this day, even including mutations, even including with manipulations from scientists that try to manipulate to disprove the Torah, there's never been another animal with one sign other than those four. Another thing that we know is that the sea is the vast majority of the world. 73% of the globe is, is water. Which means that everything we have on land, we have in the water and even more. Hashem says you're only allowed to eat a certain type of fish. It has to have fins and it has to have scales. Fine. Fins and scales. Everyone knows what fins and scales are. Fins are the little flippery things and the scales are the stuff that you scratch off. Interesting. Interesting. But the Torah says that you will find a fish with just fins, but you will never find a fish with just scales. Never. 
So you look at the fish, you say, okay, just fins, I know there's a dolphin, there is a shark, and there's plenty of fish that have just fins, just like the Torah says. But then they're telling me that I'll never find a fish with no fins, but just scales? How could it be? Again, 3,000 years later, no one can find a fish with just scales.